Hi, this is Raj. Welcome to the session on SAD Type 4. Following are the topics covered as part of this session. What is mini dimension? Since SAD Type 4 involves creation and management of, uh, we would need to know what is a mini dimension in prayer. Hence, I will be covering details about mini dimension in this session. The design aspects involved as part of many dimension. When to use a many dimension. Advantages of many dimension. What is a SRI type 4? The demo use case explained. Demo prerequisites. And the hands on part. What is many dimension? In case of a dimension where there are attributes which change rapidly or at a frequent interval of time, then they can be splitted and made to form a new dimension table named as mini dimension. Example for such rapidly or frequently changing attributes are age of a customer or employee which changes every year, salary band of an employee, a designation of an employee which changes frequently as well. The design aspects of mini dimension. A mini dimension should have its own surrogate key generated. This would be the primary key of the mini dimension table. There is no direct connection between the base dimension table and the mini dimension table. Instead, they are connected to fact table. The fact table therefore could fetch the attributes from both the dimension table in case if required. When to use mini dimension? Mini dimension is used for addressing rapidly changing dimension attributes. The dimension attributes which are used quite often for querying in a large dimension table, but they are not changed rapidly many to one attribute scenario. However, the resultant dimension table is not normalized to third normal form. Advantages of many dimension. No need to scan the big dimension table when the report is required to show the attributes which are only in many dimension table. What is a series type 4? SRE type 4 involves usage of two or more dimension tables in which one would act as a base dimension table and one or more many dimension tables. The demo use case. The use case considered for the SRE type 4 demo is on staff dimension. These are the tables involved on their structure where dimension staff SD4 main is the di base dimension table and dimension staff SD4 mini is our mini dimension table. You can see that the fact table has a reference to primary keys from both these dimension tables. Now let us move on to the explanation of the use case involved. Consider that a retail chain has 8000 stores across the country and each store is managed by some staffs leading to a total of 95,000 staff members. If we have this staff dimension maintained as part of SRE type 2 design principle, the first load by itself will have 95,000 records, one for each staff. And any change in dimension attributes of each staff will make a new record insert from there on. Consider that the retail chain has the policy of moving two-fourths of its staff from one store to another in every month of time. So the store ID attribute will change for all those relocated staffs by every month. And this is a potential candidate of frequently or rapidly changing attribute in case of this dimension table. Similarly, the age of uh, staff changes by every year 
and hence it is again a frequently changing attribute or scheduled changing attribute and thereby we can make both these attributes store ID and age to move into a separate mini dimension table and that's what you are seeing in this part of table design. This is what we are going to design and implement as part of this forthcoming demo. Demo prerequisites. Watch my video on SCD slowly changing dimension to understand what is SCD in first place and what are the SCD types applied in data warehouse domain. Watch my video on CDC, the change data capture with Pentaho kettle especially on timestamp based CDC technique as we would be using this technique as part of this demo. Then you should have a Pentaho kettle tool, then a Postgres database server and a client tool to interact with the database server. Now let us move on to the demo part. This is the transformation designed to process SRA type 4 dimension. The first two steps designed over as part of this transformation are to incrementally fetch any changes that occurred on staff table based on the timestamp based CDC technique. So let us view those two steps. So as part of the first step we are uh, selecting either the maximum date from the dimension table, the base dimension table which if already exists or we are fixing it to a default date which is a minimum date of our system so that during the first load it can load the complete data and from the next load it can load the data after the maximum data which has already loaded time. So this is the second step which is used to incrementally fetch the records from staff table which is in our source end. You can see that the filter criteria or the where condition uses the data from the previous step to incrementally identify those changes from the source table. Here the source table is named as staff underscore 2 hence you are seeing that name in the from class as staff underscore 2. Then in the source table we don't have a direct field for capturing age. Instead we have the date of birth field for capturing the date of birth of the staff. So we are using a custom built script or steps to identify the age of a staff. So this is what you are seeing here. This is one of the custom made logic the calculator step to retrieve year, month and day from the date of birth field from the source and, the, and then I have used a JavaScript step to compute the age based on this logic. You can go through this logic, uh, it would be easier to understand. And then followed by a combination lookup or update step of Pentago which is specifically designed for using on a mini dimension or junk dimension table where we have to specify the target dimension or mini dimension table name and in the lookup tab we have to pass on the fields or the attributes which are in the mini dimension and the surrogate key has to be specified as part of the technical key. So what this step does is, if there is already uh, any record for this um, mini dimension attributes combination, then it will be looked up on the staff mini key or the surrogate key of the mini dimension table will be retrieved. If there are no records for the dimensional attributes combination such as store ID or age in the mini dimension table, then it would create a surrogate key based on the table maximum plus one condition. So once that is done, we will get the surrogate key from the combination lookup or update step along with the store ID and age from the source table. And the same 
will be used for inserting into the main dimension table or updating the main dimension table. So once that step is done, we are moving on to the dimension lookup or update step which is used for populating the base dimension in SCD type 2 format. This population logic is similar to what we have seen in our SCD type 2 demo where we have to pass on the lookup key as the business key which is staff ID on this base dimension table which is dimension staff SCD4 main and then specify the fields which need to be handled as part of SCD type 2. To know more about each of these um, fields involved as part of the dimension lookup or update, either watch my video on SED type 2 or go through the Pentaho document. So this is how we will either pre, uh, populate the mini dimension based on incoming row values where the mini dimension will hold one row for each possible combination of incoming attributes values. And we also populate the base dimension table. Now let us run this transformation for each scenario and let's see what happens in the dimension tables. To begin with, there are two records in the source table which you are seeing here. You can see that the staff John Stephens is currently working on store ID 2 and this is the particular record which we will change as part of this demo to see how SCD type 4 works and to begin with there are no records in the target dimension tables which includes both base dimension table and the mini dimension table. Now let us run the transformation transformation is running completed now so let me select the base dimension table and you can see the two records from source table has been processed into the target base dimension table in SCD type 2 format let us select the record in mini dimension table okay now we can see that uh, for the two records of the source table since each of the two records in the source table has uh, two different values for the combination of store ID or AH fields hence there are two records in the mini dimension table. So this is what uh, I have mentioned while explaining the transformation that mini dimension will hold one row for each possible combination of incoming attributes values. Now to make things interesting let us do an update on the source table such that the retail chain has made a decision to relocate the staff John Stephens from store ID 2 to store ID 1 and there is an update on his email address as well. So let me update this. Okay now let us run the transformation. The transformation is completed now. Now you can see an extra record or the new record inserted for the John Stephens staff with the latest email date updated correspondingly as part of the second version record. And let us select now the base dimension table. You can see a new record has been inserted that's because it's a new possible new combination of store ID and age field hence a new record. So now to make things little further interesting let us do another update or uh, the business scenario is uh, staff ID 2 John Stephens is now again relocated from store ID 1 2001 which in turn brings another possible combination of many dimension attribute values. So 
So we are going to expect another new record entry in both mini dimension and base dimension table which we can see by selecting the target dimension table. But we have to run the transformation for that. Let us run it. Okay, the transformation seems to have completed now. Okay, after selecting the base dimension table, we can notice a new record has been inserted in the base dimension table. That's because the last updated date in the source has been changed and this is an ACD type 2 attribute as well. Hence, there is a new record in the dimension table that is base dimension table. Similarly, if we select the record from base dimension, uh, mini dimension, we can see another new record has been inserted for the mini dimension table. So, hope you have understood what a mini dimension is and how to manage or create a mini dimension. And as I said, the fact table will have a reference to both the primary keys of this base dimension and mini dimension in it. So this is what I have for you on ACD type 4 demo session. We'll meet you guys on another session. Thanks for your time.